In this section, I'm going to talk about the simple end colony optimization, or in short, SACO. Now, uh, I'm going to give a brief introduction about what problem we are going to solve using the simple end colony optimization. Because as I mentioned before that, um, for the end colony optimization, we are going to find the sortless path in a graph. And then, for example, this is a graph. We have a source right here. This is the starting point, And then we would like to find a path starting from node 1, and then we go to the destination. For example, 1, 4, 5. That is one possible path right here. So in terms of notation, when we put i, j, back at, it means that uh, that is a path, an edge. We call this is an edge from look i to j. For example, when we talk about 1, 4, and then this edge is called 1, 4. OK, so this is the notation for the edge associated with each link tau ij back at t, that is the pheromone concentration at the edge. For example, this we will have tau 2, 3 at the iteration t. That means this tau value is changing according to the iteration. We will show you, um, we will learn how to update this tau value later on. Yeah, For this one, tau 3, 5 t, a nook that um, in this modules, or uh, at least at the moment, we assume that the pheromone concentration, that is tau 3, 5 equals tau 5, 3, t. So that means if an ant traveling from 3 to 5, we are going to use this pheromone concentration. If we are going to travel from 5 to 3, and then this is the concentration, but we assume that they are the same. Yeah. So that means with this algorithm, we can assume that they can be different. Otherwise, um, yeah. So if we do not specify that they are different, we assume that they are the same. Yeah. And so when we talk about um, the cost of the path, for example, the length, that is the length of the path, say, from 1, 4, this one, uh, maybe the length or the cost, that is 5. 4, 5, the length, maybe uh, 6. And then uh, when we use this path, 1, 4, 5, the total cost, that would be 5 plus 6, that is 11, yeah? So this is the notation. So that means um, to solve this problem, we will have a lot of n, n1, 1, 2, n3, up to many n's right here, up to nk. Yeah. So we have many n's right here. Each n will construct different path, and each n will give you different cost. OK, so I will give further information right here. And this one, that is in the beginning, we are going to initialize the pheromone concentration of each path with a small random value. We need to think about why we need to initialize that as a random, small random value rather than zero. Okay, and now we move on to another concept that is once we know what problem we are going to solve and that when an ant is sitting at a loop, for example, I, we have a number of possibility going from I to G, I to J, I to K. Say, now this is an example. We have an ant sitting right here. And then so we have three possibility. Say this one, six going to one, six going to four, six going to seven. Which path we are going to choose? Okay. In end clone optimization, we are going to randomly pick one, but uh, we would like to implement, um, we would like to implement this outcome using the information of tau. So for example, this one we have tau one six, that is equals tau six one, and then this one that is tau six four equals tau four six, and this one we have 
tau six seven equals tau seven six so and so. So now we would like to implement that the higher the concentration of the pheromone, um, the path will have a high probability to be chosen. Yeah. So this idea that is very similar to um, the weight ranking, the weight costing in the binary genetic algorithm. This is the equation we are going to use. So now we would like to calculate the probability of the path ij. That means when we are going to have an ant going sitting at i, and then if we are looking at the rotation, the next node that is j, that is the probability right here. So we call this it p i j. So right here we call this is p i g. Yeah. So this is p i k. The probability is calculated like that. Um, so k here, that is that is the n k. For example, this is the k that is from one to n k. N k that is the number of ants we used in this algorithm. K that is just a number. So if we are going to use the first ant, and then uh, so we will have p one, p one, p one right here. Now, when we are considering the probability of p i j one. And then that means we are going to calculate the probability like that. So this is the equation alpha. That is a value we have to choose. Yeah. So that is alpha is a constant which is greater than zero. We have to choose it. And now u. That is the possible note we are going to. Yeah. So in this case we have three possible note g, j, k. So we call this is the the feasible note, the set of the feasible note. So we are going to sum up of all the tau value within this feasible note. And then this tau value, that is the, that is the desired note we are considering, that is J. And now I'm going to talk about this equation using a numerical example, and then you can understand better what is what, yeah? Okay. Now, in some cases, it is possible that uh, when we construct a path, it will form a loop. For example, when we consider 1, 4, so this is 1, 4, 4 goes to 2, that is 4, 2, and then 3, 4, and then 5. We will find out that there's a loop right here. Now, when we find out that there's a loop right here, we have to remove the loop so that we come up with a straight forward path. That is one, four, five. That means we are going to identify two, four right here. We move anything in between. So we will come up with one, four, five. Yeah. Okay. Um, now take a look at this example so that we understand better about what this equation or what this formula it is. Say we have four loops. One is the source node. So this is the source. We would like to construct a path that the end will travel through all the nodes and then going back to the source node. That means the source node is also the destination node. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's see how do we find out the path using the probability table right here. Assume that we have an ant sitting in look one. Uh, note that when we use the ant colony optimization, we have a number of ants right here. So that's why the ant that is going from one to up to n k. Yeah. So this ant. I mean just any n right here in this swarm. When an n is sitting at log 1, we have three possibilities. 1 going to 2, 1 going to 4, 1 going to 3. So that I use the dashed line, dash line to indicate that we have three feasible link. 2, 4, and 3. Other link, I use the, I use the solid line. Yeah. Now, the first we understand what it means by this feasible look set. And one, this one, it means that we are sitting at look one. 
K it means that we are considering the feasible look set for the N K. This guy is called K. K actually, actually it, it is from one to up to N K to number of N in this algorithm. Now, as I mentioned before, this is the iteration based algorithm. So now I considering that this iteration that is T and the free feasible look that would be two, three, four. It means that when an ant is sitting at look one, we can go to look two, we can go to look four, we can go to look three. Okay. And then now I'm going to consider P12. P12, it means that this it, it indicates that the ant is sitting at look one and then comma two. That means the next note that is two. So for NK, the probability that is given by the sum of Tau one two, tau one four, tau one three. That is in the denominator, and then because the destiny, because the next note, the candidate note that is two. So tau in the numerator that is tau one two. That is this guy. So this is the probability choosing the edge one two. The same applies to the next note. Uh, the next link that is P one three K. So that is the probability. The same the denominator is the same because we consider all the tout in this feasible look two three four. The numerator that is this link that is tau one three. Sometimes I use the comma right here to avoid confusion. Yeah. So that means tau two three that is equivalent to tau two comma three. Yeah, okay. The to avoid confusion is uh, is like this. For example, if we have tau one one one, so if I am I'm going to indicate that that is the note one to note eleven, and then so with the comma, and then I will know that this is note one going to note eleven rather than from note eleven to note one. Yeah, okay. So. Tau one four, tau one three. Oh, sorry, this is, this one should be one four. This one should be one three k. We can calculate the probability like this. And now, assume that at this point, the end choose look two, and then now in the next uh, in the next step, the end now is right here. So we are going to construct. The probability for look two, look two, the feasible look set that would be three and four because we start from one or this end that is going from one to two. We do not allow an end going back to look one, so we do not have one right here. We do not have one right here. Of course, if your problem allows an end going back to look one, and then you can put the look one right here. Okay, so anyway, I assume that the end cannot go back to look one. So when an end sitting at look two, the feasible look as the next look that would be three and four. So we are going to compute the probability p two four for the n k and p two three for the n k according to this equation. This equation that is it suggests that. The numerator, the denominator, that is the the tau two four plus tau three four. Um, sorry, it should be tau two three plus tau two four, not this one. So we come up with this denominator and then the numerator that is two three, because we consider the n going from two to three two four. That is the nu the numerator. That is tau two four right here. So because we need to construct a complete path going from one and travel back to one using all the note, and then we will have some intermediate decision right here. But anyway, we assume that the end right here it choose look four. So now, 
and n is sitting right here. As I mentioned before, we cannot go back to the no, we have already visited, so we will not go back to one, we will not go back to two, so the only possibility that is going to three. So when and then sitting at look for according to this scenario, the only feasible note that is three. Yeah? Okay. In this case, apply this equation and then the sum of all the tau in the feasible note, that is tau four three, that is this guy, and then the numerator, that is two, uh, that is tau four three, because we are checking the probability going to look three, and this is the only note, so the probability is one. That means when and n sitting at look four, according to this situation, it must go into it must be going to look three, and then when and n sitting at look three, the only possible note that is going to look one because destination note that is one. Yeah. Okay. And now, I already mentioned about how do we construct the transition probability. That this give you this table just give you some numerical example, how do we use this to determine which look we are going to do. This transition probability, that is assuming that we are now sitting at look 1, going to look 2, look 3, look 2, look 3, look 4, that is this case. Yeah? So I'm talking about this table right here, sitting at look 1, going to look 2, look 3, look 4. So. We, I just copy down the equations right here, the expression right here. And now we are going to compute the accumulated transition probability. So that is what we have done in the binary genetic algorithm. When we use the cost weighting, yeah? When we use the cost weighting probability. Now, I assume that alpha, that is one for simplicity. Alpha, all the alpha right here, they are one. And tau one two, that is this link. So we consider that we are sitting here. We will go to two, four, or three. Tau one two to probability that is zero point five. Uh, sorry, it is not the probability. I mean the pheromone concentration, the tau zero point five. And then tau one three that is zero point three. So this is zero point three, and then tau one two. There's a typo right here. This is tau one four. This one should be zero point two. So we have zero point two right here. And now when and n is sitting at look one. So we have look one. The probability going to look two according to this expression. We just substitute zero point five, zero point two, zero point three into the numerator denominator. We come up with 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2. Now we are going to consider log 2 would be the possible note. Yeah, the next note would be 2. So from this network, 0 0.5, that is the numerator. That means from note 1 going to 2, the probability, that is 0 0.5. We do the same for log 3. Yeah, when we are considering this note and then use this equation, and we come up 0 0.3. That means going from node 1 to node 3, the probability, that is 0 0.3. The same for node 4, the probability, that is 0 0.2. And now we are going to accumulate the probability. So we are going to come up with this one, that is, just put it right here, 0 0.5. Then 0 0.5 and 0 0.3, that is 0 0.8, that is the accumulated probability up to node 3. And then the next one, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, sum up together, that is 1. So that means we are going to construct a line right here. So from 0 to 0 0.5, that is log 2. And then 0 0.5 to 0 0.8, that is log 3. And then from 0 0.8 to 1, so this is log 4. So, so what we are going to do, that is to generate a random number, 0 0.6. So 0 0.6, that is around here. So that's why we pick 
dog free. Okay, so we pick dog free. Next time, if we have, for, if we are going to determine which look we are going to use for another end, we are going to generate another random number, and then according to this line or according to this accumulated transition probability, we determine which look an end is going to take. So this is just the same as the course weighting probability as we use in the genetic algorithm. Okay, so this is the evaporation of pheromone intensity. So that means after we compete a complete path for an end. So this is a complete path. And then so we are going to talk about, uh, we are going to deal with the tau value and implement the negative feedback. The negative feedback, it means that we are going to reduce the value of the tau. Yeah. So that is, we're doing, we are doing evaporation using this formula. So that means corresponding to each tau values right here, we are going to multiply the tau value with one minus rho, rho that is formula, rho that is a number in between zero to one according to the designer. If we are going to, that means we need to take a value in between zero to one. Zero and one, they are not inclusive, yeah? So say if we are going to choose rho, that is 0 0.2, 1 minus 0 0.2, that is 0 0.8. That means we are going to multiply 0 0.8 to all this tau value, yeah? So that now the tau value is reducing. So this is called the negative feedback, yeah? Now after the negative feedback, that means we reduce the value of tau to prevent premature um, convergence. Now we are going to perform the positive feedback. That means we are going to we are going to give the reward to the right path. Yeah. So now what we are going to do that is that after all the ants construct their path. And then so we are going to use this information to update those pheromone concentration um, of the path or the edges used by an end according to this equation. This equation that is T plus one, that means that the pheromone con concentration in the next iteration and then tau IJT, that is the current concentration at iteration T. So this one, delta, tau ij, that is the contribution made by an end k. So we look at delta k, tau, what it is, yeah? Uh, we just know that if the end k, if the end k use the edge ij, for example, if the ij that is one, two, we are talking about this edge. If it is used by an end k, and then we are going to compute delta tau using this equation, using this expression. Q, that is a constant value. We are going to choose Q must be greater than zero. And then F, X, K. X, K, that is the path find by the N, K. Yeah, so I'm going to explain what it is or the format of X, K. And then that is the solution of N, K. And then so this F, X, K, that is the cost. That is the sum or, or the length of the path used by an NK. So this is the update rule. I'm going to give an example. How do we apply this update rule so that uh, we are able to perform the positive feedback after we perform the negative feedback? 